Wilt and Kareem had a pretty complicated relationship. Wilt talked a bunch of trash to Kareem, like more than even the media did, and in response Kareem actually titled the chapter in his autobiography calling Wilt a loser basically. But in spite of that, years before, Wilt lent his clothes to Kareem and Kareem was always at his house going to parties and stuff. So what could have possibly turned these friends into cold-blooded enemies? I'm Jesse with Basketball Dive and this is why Wilt and Kareem hated each other. Kareem was attending Holy Providence and was in fourth grade when he first heard the name Wilt Chamberlain. Wilt at the time was already a superstar at the University of Kansas who excelled at basketball, high jump, triple jump, and even racing. He was also the pride of his hometown Philadelphia, and all of this was happening while Kareem was starting to learn the basics of basketball. Once the young Abdul-Jabbar saw pictures of the giant Wilt and got used to his last name, which used to be hard for him to remember, he was hooked. He wrote in his autobiography, Giant Steps, that he studied Wilt's photos for months. And then something happened that made Kareem fall even deeper for the guy. His parents had luckily run into Wilt one day on the beach at Atlantic City, and despite the crowd that surrounded him, they were able to squeeze out time for themselves with Wilt. They told him about Kareem, who was in 6th grade at this time, and as a keepsake, showed him a picture of their son, which he autographed. Kareem was happy for the autograph, but he was still yet to meet his idol up close. Even when Wilt started playing for the Harlem Globetrotters, Kareem's father, Alcindor Sr., would take him to Madison Square Garden to watch Wilt play. But still, they didn't cross paths. But when Kareem was 15 years old, his dream finally came true. He had gone with his friend Wesley Carpenter to watch the Rucker Tournament held at the St. Nicholas Projects on 129th Street. And here he saw his idol for the first time up close. Right here on the original Rucker Court. Um, I was in the eighth grade. I was almost as tall as he was at that point. And uh, it was finally uh, my opportunity to meet my hero. Kareem was chronically shy and anxious, but thank goodness for Wesley Carpenter, as he was able to approach Chamberlain and introduce himself with Wesley. And then Wilt replied, Oh yeah, I heard of you. You're that young boy that plays for the Catholic school. Supposed to be getting good. Kareem told him he liked how he played, and while he tried to collect himself to stay calm and not freak out, Wilt went on to say, You've got good legs. Me? I wish I had legs like that. So after this first encounter, the two would meet each other a lot at the Rucker over the years, especially after Wilt had his own Rucker team in 1964, but this wasn't the only place that they hung out. In fact, Kareem's love of Wilt deepened because Wilt had something that Kareem loved, his own jazz club called Small's Paradise. As you can imagine, here they hung out whenever Wilt was in the neighborhood. While Kareem was only a kid trying to understand how a famous player lived, Wilt also respected him for his little impact in the sport. After all, Kareem was already an All-American, national champion, and featured in the newsroom of New York's Daily Newspaper but their relationship was about to hit next level. One day, Wilt invited Kareem to his house in Park West Village to play Hearts, which is a card game, even though the kid didn't know anything about the game. But how could he have said no to visiting his idol's house alongside his idol's close friends, who were NBA players as well? But since Kareem was a novice at the card game, they couldn't bet on alcohol or money as they usually did. Instead, they staked on the loser drinking a quart of water while the one who chickens out of the game gets bathed with a whole bucket of water. After Kareem got his butt handed to him and after drinking several quarts of water, the kid lost it and asked to quit. Then, boom, he got pinned down by the guys while Wilt poured water all over him. Kareem hated this hearts game after, but his fondness for Wilt grew even deeper. He kind of like took me under his wing. Some of the things that Wilt did sometimes it bothered me. Kareem, who was the only child of his parents, was finally happy to have not just a mentor, but an elder brother of sorts. And what do elder brothers do? Well, they teach you stuff. They give you their clothes to wear, take you to parties, and teach you how to talk to girls. Wilt didn't exactly teach Kareem how to talk to girls, but his lifestyle spoke loudly of a philanderer who was both confident and charismatic, and this was something Kareem sucked at at the time. The kid wasn't good with the ladies and was extraordinarily bashful and reserved, but he was no doubt into many of the ladies that Wilt brought home. 
Kareem would eventually fall in love with a certain lady friend of Wilt, a Danish girl named Crystal, who had the same temperament as him, quiet and calm. She was also extremely beautiful, and Kareem recalls liking her for being different from the other girls Wilt brought home. He had one girlfriend from Denmark that I was like in love with. She also liked Kareem and taught him how to speak Danish, and he recalls feeling anxious about Wilt walking in on them talking to each other. So one day when Wilt was away in Europe, Kareem decided to shoot his shot and told Crystal he liked her. She said she liked him too, but reminded Kareem that she was with Wilt and that was it. But this is not the reason that Wilt hated Kareem, so let's not get too ahead of ourselves now. In fact, Wilt probably never knew that Kareem ever came forward to his chick like that, and he probably wouldn't have cared if he did, considering all the options he had. In any case, he continued to be an elder brother of sorts to Kareem. The kid usually tagged along with Wilt when he went to nightclubs, or ride in his Bentley to watch his horse win or lose a race. And as far as elder brother benefits went, Wilt gave Kareem some records from his jazz collection, and some of his expensive clothes, even when they didn't fit him. They might be of almost the same height, but Wilt was broad and ripped, while Kareem was lanky. One time, Wilt gave Kareem two silk suits he had partied in, and the excited Kareem took it home to show his mom. However, his mom wasn't pleased because of how dirty and stinky they were, and asked him to throw them away. It felt too good. My mom said, we, we can't keep these, and we had to throw them out. Kareem's mother, Cora, also ensured to keep her kid in check, who she felt was spending too much time at Wilt's house. In his book, Giant Steps, Kareem recalls his mom telling him, quote, Wilt is a grown man with plenty of things to do and people he will want to be seeing alone. He might not want you over at his house all the time. You have to remember that. I know you like being there, but he's a man, and he might not want to spend all his time with a boy still in high school. This is honestly such a touching, like, brotherhood story so far that I can't believe they ended up hating each other. But I mean, what we've seen so far is friendship that I'm sure we all wish that we had if we didn't have it already, you know? So where the heck did it go wrong then? Uh, I'm sure a lot of you with knowledge of who Wilt was might have thought maybe Kareem like took one of his girls or something, um, but that's clearly not what happened, so stick around and find out. You see, in 1965, the two would be separated by the demands of life. Wilt would sign with the Philadelphia 76ers and move to Philly while Kareem would go to LA to play college basketball for the UCLA Bruins. But there wasn't any reported bad blood between the two of them just yet, and even though Kareem admitted that he had lost some respect for his idol in 1968 because he was supporting Richard Nixon in the election, he was still cool with Wilt overall. And before Kareem got into the NBA, he played his idol for the first time in the All-Star preseason game. But then Kareem came into the NBA in 1969 and things changed, even though it wasn't necessarily immediately. You see, the media may be partly blamed for Kareem and Wilt's beef because they were fond of blowing things out of proportion, as they are now, and did everything to pit one player against the other. After all, through most of Wilt's career, he had been compared to Bill Russell and was ridiculed for losing 7 out of 8 finals against him. Even Kareem acknowledged that to the media. Wilt was never good enough. And now that Russell had retired, Wilt would finally have some breathing space. But here comes Kareem, another strong big man. And they wanted to milk the situation and would ask questions from the two that would elicit a controversial response. And according to Kareem, he did everything he could to avoid such troubles. But the truth is they didn't need the media to start a fight. During Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's rookie season playing for the Bucks, he won Rookie of the Year and was second behind Jerry West in points per game with 28.8 points per game. The kid had hit the ground running for sure, but where was his idol Wilt? Well, Wilt started the league averaging 32.2 points playing for the Lakers, but after his first eight games of this season, he suffered a terrible knee injury that kept him away till the end of the season, so the two never played against each other. They finally went head-to-head -head for the first time in the NBA the following season in 1971. Wilt was already 34 years old and out of his prime, and Kareem was 23, in the heart of his own prime. This means Wilt was 11 years his senior, both in terms of age and, of course, NBA career. I don't know about you, but I feel even though Wilt had the upper hand in terms of experience, Kareem was well-situated to be better in terms of hunger, energy, and drive. Nevertheless, in 1970-71 season, Kareem beat Wilt stat-wise in almost every way. He led the league in total points and in points per game with 31.7 points per game. He was also the league MVP. 
In the playoffs, the Bucks beat the Lakers in the conference finals 4-1 and then went on to win the finals 4-0 against the Baltimore Bullets, with Kareem earning the finals MVP award. As for Wilt, he led the league in rebounds with 18.2 per game, but was 20th in points per game with 20.7 points. But Wilt got his revenge the following year, but not in the regular season, where Kareem was also the MVP and points leader. It was in the playoffs, though, where he would get his revenge. The Milwaukee Bucks faced the Lakers in the playoffs, but the match was more about Kareem versus Wilt than anything else. At the end of the day, Wilt came out on top after a six-game thriller. Then he went on to win the finals MVP and his second NBA championship against the Knicks. Wilt retired from the NBA after playing his last season in the 72-73 season, and it was in this retirement that the rift between him and Kareem would become known. Remember when I said Kareem lost some respect for Wilt over his political views in 1968? Well, something sorta similar happened to that when Wilt released his first autobiography titled Wilt. In the book, Wilt insulted African American women regarding them as inferior both socially and sexually. He was a ladies man, he had been with thousands of women, and apparently he had a racial preference. Well, as for Kareem, he thought Wilt was talking trash and didn't hesitate to say so in public. Wilt responded by saying that Kareem didn't know what he was saying, and from then, Kareem said he thought of Wilt as a race traitor. If you've ever watched the Boondocks, you'd probably think of Wilt as an Uncle Ruckus. Then, in an almost unexpected turn of events, Wilt became what he had hated, the media. He would criticize Kareem with every chance he got, and matters did not help him after Kareem moved to LA and started destroying all his records, such as becoming the first Lakers MVP. Kareem would give a detailed response to all of Wilt's criticisms in his book, Giant Steps, released in 1983, but he also praised Wilt and outlined how they met and what his relationship meant to him. Nevertheless, he revealed that Wilt tried to control him, but couldn't. He tried to dominate him offensively, but he also couldn't. Wilt wasn't a good competitor, and in some cases, he embarrassed Wilt on the court with his performances. Kareem also disclosed that Wilt's teammate Jerry West told him that the first time he ever saw Wilt ask for help from his teammate was when he played against Kareem. That was how much of a pain he was to Wilt's behind. Then the following year in 1984, Kareem broke his all-time scoring record, and Wilt was asked to the ceremony to congratulate the reigning champion. Last night. Congratulations, Kareem. This must have sucked, and this is probably why Wilt showed up in a black tank top and looked reluctant throughout. Man, that must have been tough for Wilt to do. You would think that the relationship would improve after this, but it seemed to have fueled Wilt's hatred and what some might call jealousy for Kareem as he continued to throw shade at him. He would downgrade Kareem's efforts and milestones and would call him out for not being a good defender and rebounder, even though Kareem is ranked third all-time in rebounds. You, you still talk about Kareem as yeah. the guy that just doesn't do it for the rebounds. I don't right. know how much of that is needle. I don't know. Then Kareem dropped the biggest bombshell against Wilt that would make headlines for years, even today. Websites still talk about how Kareem responded when Wilt would just not stop bashing him. In his second autobiography titled Kareem, published in 1990, he dedicated a whole chapter to Wilt. But mind you, not to pay tribute to him, but to question his continued beef towards his success and to lambast him. He titled the chapter, A Letter to Wilt Chumperlain. Which man, you know when someone changes a name around like that, there's gonna be some mind-blowing savagery. And there was. Some of the things Kareem wrote were... In professional basketball, Bill Russell and the Boston Celtics gave you a yearly lesson in real competitive competence and teamwork. All you could say was that your teammates stunk and that you had done all you could, and besides, the refs never gave you a break. Poor Wilt. He also added, Bill and the Celts took one from you in 1969 and the Knicks followed suit in 70. People are still trying to figure out where you disappeared to in that series. True to form, after the Knicks beat the Lakers in the World Championship in 1973, you quit and haven't been seen on the court since. And oh, there's more. Of course, you came out every so often to take a cheap shot at me. During the sixth game of the World Championship Series in 1988, you stated, Kareem should have retired five years ago. I can now see why you said that. If I had quit at the time you suggested, it would have been right after a disappointing loss to the 76ers, and it would have been typical of one of your retreats. And then finally he wrote, Given your jealousy, I can understand that. So, now that I have left, one thing will be part of my legacy. People will remember that I work with my teammates and helped us win. 
You will be remembered as a whining crybaby and a quitter, stats and all. Wow, that was cold, and I had only provided excerpts of the entire chapter. Anyway, you bet Wilt was going to respond to all these. In fact, he also released another autobiography, A View From Above, in 1991, and reiterated how he was better than Kareem. This was the back and forth battle they fought for years and never really got the chance to truly reconcile before Wilt's death in October of 1999. But after Wilt's death, Kareem had nothing but kind words for his former pal, saying, Wilt was one of the greatest ever and we will never see another one like him. And in 1987, in an interview with Roy Firestone, Wilt had to admit that as athletes, there were bound to be rivalries and pride that will certainly get in the way of relationships, and that was exactly what ruined his relationship with Kareem. You know, athletes are really tough people to, they have a lot of pride. So, I personally think that if Wilt hadn't died in 99, they probably would have eventually been able to sort things out and make up a little bit, but what do you think? Make sure you comment in the comments below for us and we'll respond. And if you want to know how Kareem and Wilt separately became the legends that they did today, we have some great family documentaries for you on the channel, and go check them out.